This is Bishop George Murray. On behalf of your Catholic friends and neighbors in the Diocese of Youngstown, I invite you to join us for this celebration of the Holy Mass. Good morning and welcome to our celebration of Holy Mass. Today is the 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our celebrant is Father Jim Corda, president of CTNY, the Catholic Television Network of Youngstown. I'm Barb Zorn from St. Columba Cathedral and Holy Family Parish in Poland. As we pray this Mass, let us remember in our prayers Anne de Toro. God has spoken by the prophets, spoken his unchanging word, each from age to age proclaiming God the one, the righteous Lord. In the world's despair and turmoil, one firm anchor holds us fast. God eternal reigns forever, God the first and God the last. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. It's good to be with you this morning as we gather to celebrate God's presence in word, in Eucharist, and also within us. So together let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to, to Almighty, Almighty God, God and, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us join the angels in their hymn of praise. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on, on earth, earth peace to people of goodwill. Good we, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, you we glorify you, you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy, for on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. As the Lord spoke to me, the Spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. And I heard the one who was speaking say to me, Son of man, I am sending you to the Israelites, rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have revolted against me to this very day. Hard of face and obstinate of heart, they are to whom I am sending you. But you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God, and whether they heed or resist, for they are a rebellious house, they shall know that a prophet has been among them. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Our eyes are fixed on the Lord, pleading for his mercy. Our, Our eyes are, are fixed, fixed on the Lord, pleading for his mercy. mercy. 
To you I lift up my eyes, who are enthroned in heaven, as the eyes of servants are on the hands of their masters. Our eyes eyes are are fixed fixed on on the Lord, Lord, pleading pleading for for his his mercy. mercy. As the eyes of a maid are on the hands of her mistress, so are our eyes on the Lord our God, till he have pity on us. Our Our eyes are are fixed on the Lord, Lord, pleading for for his mercy. mercy. Have pity on us, O Lord, have pity on us, for we are more than sated with contempt. Our souls are more than sated with the mockery of the arrogant, with the contempt of the proud. Our Our eyes are are fixed on the Lord, Lord, pleading for for his mercy. mercy. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, that I, Paul, might not become too elated because of the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, an angel of Satan to beat me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I begged the Lord about this, that it might leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. I will rather boast most gladly of my weaknesses in order that the power of Christ may dwell with me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and constraints for the sake of Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Jesus departed from there and came to his native place, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished. They said, where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom has been given him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his native place and among his own kin and in his own house. So he was not able to perform any mighty deeds there apart from curing a few sick people by laying his hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My friends, for most of us, the thought of going home is really a wonderful experience, especially if we've been away from home for a long period of time. We find ourselves longing for familiar sights and sounds and faces. Now, if you and I feel that way, it seems reasonable that Jesus had those same feelings when he went home to his hometown of Nazareth. For approximately 30 years, he called Nazareth his home. Then his ministry called him away. Now, he did not go far, not by our standards. Yet we need to keep in mind the difference between traveling in the 21st century as as opposed to the first century. Now we could hop on a plane and be almost anywhere in the world in a matter of hours. In New Testament times, no one ever dreamed of such a thing. There were no paved roads, no cars. The primary means of transportation was to walk. Now suppose your hometown was 30 miles away 
And the only way to get there was to walk. How often would you go home? Well, some of us would make the trip more often than others. But for many, it would be quite an occasion. And that's how it was for Jesus. When he left home, time and distance did not allow him to return often. Well, today's gospel tells of the time when he did return. And he must have gone home with great excitement. But we see that the visit proved to be one of the, dis the greatest disappointments in his life. On the Sabbath, he went into the synagogue to teach. And there they were somewhat oppressed, impressed by what he had to say. But then he was only to them the son of the carpenter, the son of Mary. So they didn't take his message seriously. In fact, the gospel said many were offended by it. And Jesus left there saying, no prophet is without honor, except in their native place, among their own kin, and in their own house. In other words, he felt dishonored in the place and by the people he knew the best. I find myself wondering, what kind of reception did Jesus expect? In other words, what kind of honor does Christ want from us? Well, one thing for sure is that we would never ridicule Jesus. We would never take offense at Jesus. We would not write him off as the mere son of the carpenter. From our vantage point in history, we see him as he really is, the son of God, the great teacher, the savior of the world. Now, if Jesus came to our hometown, we probably would have a big parade and celebration. We would have the mayor present him with keys to the city, and everybody who is anybody would come to honor him. We would show him the churches, the cathedrals, basilicas built in his honor. We would share songs written about him. We would ask him to turn on the television or the radio and hear programs and preachers proclaiming his power to save. Our hometown would not make the same mistake as his hometown of Nazareth. But I still find myself wondering, what kind of honor does Jesus want from us? Do you think that he would desire the kind of honor that I just expressed? I don't think so. People who have depth of character and bigness of mind would be offended by such extravagance. Now leave the city of Nazareth and walk with Jesus, and you'll see how little he cared for flattery and honor. One day, a man knelt before him and called him good teacher, and his response was, why do you call me good? Only God is good. On another occasion, he watched the scribes and Pharisees decorate the graves of the prophets whom they and their parents had killed. Remember, prophets were immune to flattery. And Jesus stands in the line of all the great prophets, and he, even less than they, are pleased with flattery and honor. The people of his own hometown dishonored him with their ridicule, we would never do that, but we do dishonor Jesus in other ways. We give him words of praise that at times are just mere lip service. He could care less for our parades and our songs and our churches. He would care more about our personal lives and the quality of our relationships. He would want to know how a parent is treating their children, and how a husband treats his wife. He would want to know how well we are meeting the needs of the poor, the aged, the suffering. Jesus believed in some things so deeply that he was willing to die for them, and he did. 
And the only kind of honor that Jesus wants is to hear his message, take it to heart, and apply it to our own lives. No prophet it was, is without honor except in their native place. What about your place and my place? What kind of honor is Jesus finding there? Together, let us proclaim the faith that we all share. I believe in one God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Humbly now let us present to God our special petitions. For the church around the world, that we may be a sign of the goodness of God in our weakness and humility. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders in this country and around the globe, that they may acknowledge their own inadequacies and look to God for the strength and wisdom they need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For prophets among us who witness to the grace of God and speak in the Lord's name, that they may be faithful to their calling and know the value of their work, even when they encounter resistance or rebellion. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For those who are unjustly incarcerated, that they may continue to have hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That by participating in the Eucharist today, we may grow in faith and holiness and may be strengthened to live out our faith in our communities. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God in heaven, we praise and thank you. May we give you honor and glory in all that we say and do. And we make this prayer in the spirit through Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashion for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall 
might become the means of our salvation through Jesus. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Paul, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace 
and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of Christ be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away, away the, the sins, sins of the world. Of the world. Have, Have mercy on us. us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. To Jesus Christ, our sovereign King, who is the world's salvation, a praise and a homage do we bring, and thanks and adoration. Christ Jesus, victor, Christ Jesus, Christ Jesus, Lord and Redeemer, your